This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the best all-in-one platform for any of your website building needs. Hey guys, it's Celestia, and today we're going to be talking about why you might be struggling to sell your art and how learning some basic marketing techniques could help you change that. I've done a similar video in the past called Why You're Not Getting Commissions, linked in the iCard above, which did also go over some of the same talking points I'll be bringing up today in the commissions section, so I will be repeating myself a little bit in that area. But that video was exclusively about selling commissions. But that's only one way you can sell your art, and every Every way that you can requires a different marketing strategy. In today's video, I'll be going over a lot of general marketing strategies for artists selling their work in any form, and then shorter sections specifically including more marketing strategies for artists selling commissions, for artists selling their work on merch, and for artists looking for industry work. Ideally, by the end of the video, my marketing consultation day job will have finally paid off for some of you, at the very least. But first, let me take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Yes, again. I know you're probably sick of hearing me talk about them, but I wouldn't keep endorsing them this hard if they weren't genuinely great. Squarespace is an all-in-one website building and hosting platform that I've been using since long before I started working with them, primarily for my art studio website and my personal portfolio. After going through some of their new templates when making this, I've actually decided to give my studio site a complete overhaul because there are just so many good ones that there's pretty much no limit to what you can make with them. I'm nowhere near done yet, but I'll show you guys as soon as I am because I'm actually really excited about it. It's not just the templates that are so impressive though. You can edit them using Fluid Engine, a next generation website design system system that lets you customize every aspect of your site with a smooth, easy to use drag and drop system. Using it, you can pretty much do anything. Turn your site into an online store, create members only spaces to keep exclusive content behind a paywall, and so much more. I'll go over it more later in the video, but a good website is the foundation for every single way that you can successfully market your art. And Squarespace is the place to go to make that happen. And you can get a free trial to test it out yourself right now by going to squarespace.com slash duchesscelestia, linked in the description, and use code duchesscelestia for 10% off your first domain purchase. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video, and please go check them out. All that out of the way, let's get into the video. Marketing sucks. I know that's a bold statement from a marketing consultant, but it is the truth, at least in my opinion. Having to constantly analyze consumer habits and interests and market demand, and how to make people want what you're selling, and how to get the people who already do to actually find it, it's exhausting. And a lot of artists don't realize that if they want to make art their career, it's half their job. Artists are effectively small business owners, and small businesses need a lot of marketing, something that a lot of artists aren't prepared for and subsequently aren't doing. To be a professional artist, you have to learn professional marketing, whether you like it or not. And the biggest reason I see artists fail to succeed as a result is the fact that they don't understand how big of a deal it really is. So my goal with this video is to break down some basic marketing techniques that can be easily applied to a variety of different art career paths, as well as specific ones for different niches, and hopefully help at least a couple artists learn to market their work better in a way that gets them more engagement and sales. Naturally, let's start with the big one, general tips that apply to artists of all kinds. First off, the thing every marketing consultant in the history of marketing consultants has always recommended, know your market. This can actually be pretty difficult for artists because of the nature of our work. We create art that we like and that we're interested in, so we're not focused on what a potential audience might be interested in. It's not like selling or promoting a product that you make for the purpose of reaching a target audience with it. You know your target audience if you're trying to market Doritos and you're selling Doritos with the intention of reaching them. With art, you're making it for yourself and then trying to market it to others, so establishing the market of interested buyers can be difficult. There will always be a degree of pandering that you have to do as a result, like you won't always be able to draw what you want and market it to others. You'll also sometimes have to draw what the market wants. That makes figuring out what that market is all the more important. Establish who your art and the form in which you're selling it appeals to, so that you can keep drawing what you want as much as you can. Then look at that market, see what's popular with them, and create additional art tailored to their interests. For example, I make anime art. Art. That's my market. By making anime art my primary focus, I can appeal to anyone who likes that style without needing to stop drawing what I like. But taking it one step further lets me market more effectively. What art trends are popular in the anime community right now? What subject matter are they into right now? What types of merch are they buying and why? I can tailor the art that I make to those interests more effectively than if I just said I'm gonna try to sell my art to anyone and everyone who might be interested. I can also tailor my marketing strategies towards them. If I was trying to sell my work to just anyone, I'd end up doing it in a very generic way to try to appeal to all audiences with just basic, hi, I sell merch and take commissions. In selling specifically to anime fans, I can use more specific and effective strategies, like I have fan merch of this popular anime, or I'll draw your secret Naruto OC, or that super cool streetwear style that you guys are into right now, I have a merch line of it, and so on. Yes, your advertising likely won't appeal to more general audiences as a result, but by appealing specifically to the audience that's most likely to buy it instead, you'll end up generating more interest and more sales. But that's just your general market. It's a 
lot easier if you also have a niche. It's no secret that the art market is unbelievably oversaturated, with vastly more artists selling their work than clients buying it. Artists are inundated with more competition than they could possibly stand out from without a lot of hard work. So knowing your general market isn't always enough. Yes, you've narrowed it down from everyone to just some people, but the number of other artists who also appeal to those people is still exceptionally high. You're competing with a million other anime artists, even if you're no longer competing with a billion artists of all kinds, and you have to find a way to set yourself apart from them. And one way is to develop a niche. Being a generalist, or someone who works on all sorts of different types of art, is often very ineffective because people tend not to look for generalists when they're hiring for something. If they want concept art for a video game, for example, they're gonna look for a concept artist who specializes in it, not a general artist with some concept art experience. If they want a furry commission, they're gonna seek out an artist who specializes in furry art, not an artist who does everything but has some furry art examples. It's much easier to get work when you're known for a specialty, when you're not some anime artist. You're that anime artist who has a retro pop art style, or you're that anime artist who specializes in furries, or you're that anime artist who makes really cute chibis. You'll end up only really getting work within that niche at the expense of other work you're capable of, but you will get a lot of it. Just make sure it's a niche that you enjoy and can commit to long term. It also means you can market specifically to a very unique audience and build a reputation as the go-to artist within your field, which is the best possible way to get consistent work. And it's not like you can only have one niche either, it's just that if you have multiple, you need to market them separately and differently. If you are a generalist that does a lot of things, like I am, market each specialty on their own and to their respective audiences. I market my merch, illustration commissions, and anime style work using methods tailored to my main audience that's interested in that style, as well as what's popular in the anime community. I market my concept art completely separately through ArtStation, using projects and portfolios to apply for jobs directly. I market my web design illustrations on sites like Dribbble to audiences specifically looking for it. I market my paintings to individual buyers and galleries, rely on word of mouth, and sell at local events and art fairs. I have several different niches, and that's totally fine so long as I keep them completely separate from each other in terms of marketing and promotion, so that I can target their markets individually in the most effective way possible, because what one market would find appealing might be completely irrelevant to another one. Naturally, it's also important to try to build as large and as consistent of an online presence as you possibly can. I know that's easier said than done, and everyone in the world is probably as sick of hearing it as I am, but it's true. The larger your following is, the more potential clients you'll be able to reach, the more demand there will be for your work, and the more reputable you'll become. You'll be in less direct competition with other artists if people know who you are and think of you when they have art needs, and even more so if they want art from you specifically because it's from you. Obviously, this is unbelievably difficult and takes a massive amount of work, effort, and time, but it is worthwhile to try. Posting consistently on as many social media platforms as you're confident you can manage is incredibly important, even if it's just work in progress shots, doodles, and other comparatively low effort content that takes less time to create. It's borderline impossible at this point to figure out algorithms and how they work with any degree of consistency these days, but posting as regularly as possible is always effective to at least some degree. And circling back to niches, you should also tailor the content that you post to the platform you post it on. If I'm marketing my anime-based art illustrations, merch, and commissions, I'll do it on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, and YouTube, because those are the audiences that would be interested. If I'm marketing my concept art, I'll do it on ArtStation and Reddit, because that's where my clients for that are. Web design illustration marketing is ArtStation and Dribbble for the same reasons. Work in progress shots are posted on Twitter and Instagram stories because they're the most casual, and big projects for companies or groups that I've completed with logo design, concept art, illustrations, graphics, and more go on ArtStation where they can be grouped into projects and viewed as such. Figuring out which platforms suit which niches lets you choose what content you should post where. In terms of building an audience, it can also be really helpful to capitalize on the popularity of art trends like Mermaid, Drawtober, Art Fight, Draw This in Your Style challenges, and so on, because people don't need to be interested in your art specifically to be interested in the art that you contribute to that trend. It's the same for fan art. It doesn't necessarily get you sales or work, but it does build you a bigger audience, which indirectly does get you sales eventually. It's also important to have a recognizable brand that's reflected across all of your social media. Making a brand sheet could be really helpful. I'll show some examples on screen here. Some companies have whole brand decks with pages upon pages of information about their brand, but for artists running small businesses, a simple one sheet should be more than enough. It's about establishing and compiling the visual assets that are used throughout all of your branding and social media. A color palette, some fonts, a logo, visual elements and shapes like clouds, stars, leaves, and so on, a mascot if you have one, stuff like that. Making sure your profiles are all immediately recognizable as you, based on just a quick glance at the visuals alone, helps build brand recognition. It makes people remember you, and the more they remember you, the more likely they are to buy from you or hire you. This branding should also apply to your website. Like I said in the intro, it's a 
abundantly important that you don't just rely on social media, but that you also have a clean, professional website for your work. A portfolio is the most important thing for any working artist, because your work is obviously going to be the potential client's biggest priority, and their ability to see it as easily as possible should subsequently be your biggest priority. If you have multiple niches in your art, your portfolio should be organized to have them all separated. That way, if a client interested in character design looks at it, for example, they can easily just click a button and see only examples of your character design work. Personally, mine is separated into illustration, character design, logo design, commission examples, and chibis. And my web design illustration is on an entirely different portfolio since clients hiring for that really have no interest in my other work. Your website should also have clear and obvious links to your primary methods of selling your art, like your online store or your commission form. If you're looking for industry work, it's not a bad idea to have your CV or resume on there as well. I know the sponsor segment is done, but honestly, Squarespace does genuinely make this all really easy to do, and it's an asset that I promote for a very good reason. Next, networking with other artists and engaging with your community is excellent, not just because it helps you find new opportunities and establish helpful connections, but also because you meet cool people and might actually make friends and develop relationships that you genuinely enjoy. You recommend them for opportunities, they recommend you for opportunities, you support cool people and they support you, and you open the door to deeply rewarding relationships. It's a win-win for your social life and your work life, so whenever you have the time, it is worthwhile. Paid ads and boosted posts on social media are also beneficial, but how beneficial they are is heavily dependent on what you're actually selling. I might boost a post with my commission sheet, but I wouldn't run it as an ad, because commissions are generally a one-on-one, -on -one, person to person interaction between the artist and the client, and a post from me advertising that directly reads as more genuine and authentic than a paid banner ad, which would be a lot more corporate. Conversely, announcing a new merch line is something I would be more likely to do with a paid ad, because while a commission is advertising from me directly to a customer, a merch line is advertising from my brand to a customer, so the more corporate tone and presentation would be appropriate. Finally, the biggest thing to take away from the general marketing tips is to just set yourself apart from your competition in any and every way you can. I know I've gone into that a little already when we discussed market oversaturation, but there's more to be done than just focus on your niche to combat it. Look at an artist who's going down the same career path as you, be that merch, commissions, industry work, or a combination of multiple, who is very successful. Analyze what they post and how they post it, figure out why their strategies are successful, and then adopt them in your own marketing. But go one step ahead. They're advertising in Instagram Reels with short form video ads? Do that, but also do it on YouTube Shorts and TikTok. Their merch is shipped with a cute little branded thank you card with their social media promoted? Do that, but also use branded packaging stickers and throw in a little discount coupon. Take the strategies that other people are successfully using and use them better. And look at your own art too. Look at it from a client's perspective, not your own. What would motivate you to buy your art rather than the work of an artist with a similar style? What's unique about your own art that would make it more valuable to you than someone else's? Once you've identified what that is, you can emphasize it and you can market it specifically based on that quality. Whether it's a part of your style that's particularly memorable or appealing, the subject matter of what you draw, whatever. It's what's going to make a client want your art and not your competitions, so it's what you need to bring their attention to. The last way I've personally found helpful in setting your art apart is by making a personal connection with viewers and potential clients in any way you can. I've mentioned this before when using Mew Triple as an example. She's an amazing artist, but that's not the biggest reason her art is popular, at least in my opinion. It's because her comics express short but compelling, relatable narratives. In five panels or less of simple, easily readable art, she tells funny, emotional, and interesting stories that readers can quickly and strongly resonate with. What sets them apart isn't the quality of her art or the style, but the fact that these comics create a strong personal connection with anyone reading them. It's why comics like hers generate so much engagement and are so helpful in building an audience. And even when those comics aren't making their creators money directly when posted publicly, they build an audience that eventually will. Obviously not everyone can make comics all the time for the sole purpose of making a personal connection, but conveying an emotional or funny message through art pieces does the same and can have the same positive outcome. Even drawing popular memes that you know will make someone laugh does. Any way you can connect to viewers is a way that you can set yourself apart from other artists who don't, which can also be accomplished by inserting more of yourself into your content. Video content and regular posting about you, your life, and your art helps people establish that connection, because now there's a person behind the art that they have an interest in beyond just what they create. I know I personally buy more from artists that I know and like, more than those I don't know or feel any connection to, because I want to support a creator I respect. And that is the case for a lot of people. Jesus, six pages into the script and I'm just now finishing the general tips. I'm so sorry. Next, let's talk about marketing tips specific to artists looking to market their commissions. First, make it as clear as physically possible that you're accepting them at all, and make it as easy as physically possible for people to order them. Because the market is so oversaturated, customers can and will lose interest in 
in commissioning an artist just because another artist made it easier to. They'll pick the artist with the lowest barrier of entry in terms of ease of commissioning them. For example, if they're considering two artists and one has commissions open in their bio or username and the other doesn't, they'll usually pick the artist who they don't have to DM first to ask if they accept them. If they're considering two artists and one has their prices clearly listed and the other doesn't, they'll usually pick the artist that they don't have to ask about them, especially given how awkward it can be to have them answer with their prices, have those prices be too high, and then have to back out. If they're considering two artists and one has an easily found and filled out commission form while the other one doesn't specify how to order a commission at all, they'll usually pick the artist that's easier to commission without having to DM them to ask how. In order to maximize the commissions you receive, make sure that all potential clients have to do is look at your profile to know that you're accepting them, what you charge for them, and how they can order them. It also helps to post your finished commissions whenever you get them, because not only does that help you in terms of maintaining consistent posting, it reminds people, oh yeah, they're taking commissions, and gives them a visual example of what they could be getting from you if you ordered one. Plus, the more examples you have of finished work, the more confident a client will be in developing an idea of what to expect from you in terms of quality, which will make them feel a lot more comfortable with the idea of hiring you. Next tip, commodify your commissions. If all you do is market that you're open for commissions, you're only selling to people who already actively have a need or desire for commissioned art. People who were already looking to commission an artist for something. That's not a bad thing, but it could be a better thing, because there are tons of people who don't know they want commissioned art yet that you could be targeting too. For example, tons of people would look at a commission sheet and think, okay, whatever, I'm not looking for anything in particular to be drawn right now. At least a significant handful of those same people would look at a post saying, need a new social media icon? Order one now for 30 bucks, with a bunch of examples, and think, all right, sure, I could use a new icon. It's still just a headshot commission, but it's marketed as an icon. The trick is giving your commission a relatable, common purpose. You're not selling art, you're selling a product. And in doing so, you're marketing to people who never would have been interested in a commission without it. Christmas, Mother's Day, Father's Day, and any holiday where it's common to be giving sentimental gifts are all also great opportunities for this. Because there's no easier way to give a commission a purpose than to say something along the lines of, looking for a one-of-a-kind gift that'll make your loved one smile? What's better than a custom illustration of a treasured family photo, or a portrait of them, or a pet portrait, and so on? YCH, or Your Character Here commissions, where you draw one pose and charge a reduced price to draw other people's characters in it, are also really good for this, because they let the client immediately envision the end product as something that they would find valuable. Finally, just make sure that you're not just waiting for commissions to come to you. If all you do is post, commissions are open, here's my sheet, and call it a day, you're probably not going to get anywhere near as many of them as you want. That's a good first start, but that's pretty much all it is. You also have to seek people out who are looking for them. There are tons of threads on Twitter of people saying, looking for an artist to commission for this thing, drop your info in the replies, and all you have to do is search commissions to find them and start dropping your info in those replies. There are tons of art-based Discord servers that also have hiring channels, not to mention places like r slash hungry artists that are devoted specifically to helping artists connect with people looking to hire them. Wherever you're looking for jobs, what matters is that you are looking for jobs and not just waiting for them to come to you. Next up, marketing tips for artists selling merch. First off, if you don't have a particularly big following as it is, utilizing sites with existing marketplaces is going to be a very, very big deal. I know when I started out with absolutely no following, my store was on Big Cartel, a site that is actually really great in a lot of ways as a store, but is entirely dependent on you driving traffic to it. You're responsible for getting people to find it. And because I had no audience to actually send to it, I was not getting a lot of sales. Once I switched to Etsy, a platform where your listings are promoted to a massive existing marketplace already using it without you needing to drive traffic, those sales legitimately quadrupled. Marketplace platforms like that are basically necessary for artists with smaller followings who can use the followings of the platforms themselves to generate sales instead. And I would know, having experienced it firsthand. You can always switch to another platform like Shopify or Big Cartel later if you grow enough of an audience not to need that marketplace anymore, because those platforms do allow for a lot more branded customizability of your store and custom URLs, which are pretty valuable assets. But at least in the beginning, marketplace platforms are a must-have in my opinion. On that note, no matter where you are in terms of following, it's important to make sure that your store is linked on absolutely all of your social media and your website front and center, without potential customers needing to look for it. The harder it is for them to find or know about, the less likely they are to put in the effort to do so, and the less sales you'll get as a result. Next, make sure your inventory is as extensive and varied as possible. Naturally, the more items you have available, the more potential customers you'll get interested, especially if they're in different styles. For example, in terms of apparel, I sell cute pastel designs, I sell black and white streetwear designs, I sell funny meme designs, and I sell fairly neutral middle ground designs that could appeal to anyone. That variety means there's usually something on my store that could interest anyone, regardless of their personal tastes, but also individual lines within my merch that can be 
marketed to specific audiences too. But I don't just sell apparel because not everyone is interested in that. I also sell stationery, stickers, notebooks, blankets, art books, charms, and more so as to reach the largest possible audience with that variety so that anyone visiting my store could potentially find something that they want. You can also pretty easily reuse the same designs on different types of merch, especially if you use print on demand. And variety isn't just important in terms of the items you sell, but also in terms of price points. It's always best to be sure that your store has something for everyone's budget. You'll make the most sales if you can cater to a customer that wants to spend $200 on apparel as much as you cater to a customer that wants to spend $5 on stickers. Moving on, I briefly mentioned that I could market individual merch lines to individual markets because they all fit the same style or theme. This can be a very useful technique. Create a merch line in one style, release it as a package deal, and market it as the streetwear collection or the kawaii collection. It encourages people to look at every design released if they like the style itself, and might even prompt them to buy more than they originally intended to because it's part of a collection in a style or theme that they enjoy. This is especially effective if the line is limited edition and only available for a certain period of time, because the I'll buy it later if I still want it mentality is one of the most common ways that artists lose sales, since people forget once they've decided to come back to it later, and limited availability basically means get it now or you never will. So it fights that. Obviously that isn't always an option, but at least in some cases it can be really beneficial, and you can also re-release limited lines for additional runs later on to get the most out of those designs. Another tip worth mentioning is the integration of your merch production into your social media presence. Did you just finish the sketch of a new merch design? Post it to social media and build some hype for the final design. Did you already finish it but you're not ready to release it yet? Post some cropped snippets to get people interested and excited. Do you make speed paints? Record one of a merch design's production and link to where people can get it in the description, since they're more actively interested in the art being made than they would have been otherwise. There are tons of ways to use social media to boost interest in your upcoming merch releases without requiring a lot of effort and just utilizing what you already have content-wise. So get creative. Finally, sales. There's a reason sales and discount codes are so commonplace, and as scummy as it feels to admit it, it's because they're one of the most effective methods of manipulating potential clients with false urgency. Basically, if you would normally charge $20 for something, you charge $25 for it instead and make that the item's base price on a regular basis. Then, on special occasions like events or as loyalty perks on Patreon, similar platforms, or even email mailing lists, you consistently offer discount codes and sales that end up reducing that price back down to $20 for a limited time. So you're technically not losing any money because that's what you would have charged in the first place, but customers feel like they're getting a deal so long as they order right away. This is particularly effective during big business seasons like Christmas and other gift-giving holidays like Black Friday, and really any event or period of time where sales and discounts are expected and heavily utilized. Yes, it's deceptive, but when everyone in any kind of sales-based career is doing it, you kind of have to do the same to compete. Capitalism is the antithesis of everything good, but we're all basically still slaves to it, so it is what it is. And with that, we're finally at the last section, marketing for industry jobs. This section will be shorter since the majority of industry jobs aren't actually gotten through marketing, but rather through networking and just directly applying. But there are still some tips I can give you to make yourself more hireable throughout that process, so I'll do my best. When it comes to getting hired, industry jobs are almost nothing like commissions or merch. You're not one person trying to sell your art to hundreds or thousands of potential customers. You're applying to individual organizations and companies that are picking from hundreds or thousands of artists. Unless you're part of a studio, putting out active advertising for your services in the industry is not going to be particularly effective, because the people interested in hiring you for industry jobs don't need to go looking for you. They don't need to search social media for artists. They don't need to seek anyone out. They know very well that one art station job listing post will yield more job applications than they have time to sift through. So advertising isn't really relevant to them in most cases. This is very much an instance in which you need to be actively networking as much as you can, getting your name out there and seeking out job listings to apply to rather than hoping to be contacted for work by employers. As such, the best advice I can give you is to be prepared for how they'll evaluate you when you do apply. And a lot of it comes down to your portfolio. This is a prime example of a situation in which having it organized into categories is abundantly important. They need to be able to see examples of exactly what they're interested in hiring you for right away. To the point that just having a portfolio with sections they can click might not even be enough. I would personally lean towards having separate portfolios for each type of job you apply for to cultivate the image of that type of work being your specialty. One for concept art, one for illustration, one for environment design, and so on. Industry companies are not interested in hiring generalists who do everything. They're interested in hiring specialists who do one thing very well. So even if you are a generalist, make it look like you're not. Make it look like what you're applying for is your specialty by giving it its own portfolio. CVs and or resumes should also be considered in this. If you're including a CV on your portfolio, only include work experience that's relevant to what an employer viewing that portfolio might be interested in. Beyond that, what's most interestingly different with industry work 
is that it's almost the opposite of every other type of art marketing. For commissions and merch, your unique style as an artist is almost 100% of what makes you desirable and hireable. But when applying to industry positions, your style being as generic and not memorable as possible is actually a benefit. They're usually not interested in your style at all. They have a style that they want you to match, and they're more concerned with your ability to deliver on different criteria, like creative character design or even matching the style of an existing artist they've worked with. So for industry portfolios, I would honestly advise the opposite that I would for other portfolios. Use your highest quality, most generic work that does not stand out from the work of others, but rather shows technical skill and polished design. They want deliverables. They want to see examples of what they can expect of you if you're hired with as much consistency and predictability as they can get. They already have a vision, they don't need yours. They want to know that you can bring it to life in the exact way that they want. And that finally brings me to the end of Marketing with Celestia, episode 2. Hopefully all of this useless knowledge I've gathered in my career will have at least a little bit more value now, even if only a couple of you found it helpful. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you guys enjoyed this brief look into the black abyss that is my marketing experience. Special thank you as always to channel members Cafe Soleil, Joseph Solomon, TC Pratt, Haruki Kenway, Zelda Deverack 42, and Art of Amethyst Fable, as well as patrons Batman, Kyle Lowe, Blue Swanson, Cora Fear, Jamisha Walker, Alengshi, Kim Yuan, Shamil Sheep, Crazy Asar, Gen Tong, Grayson Xavier, MG, Blah Mage, TC Pratt, Finn, Celine Merriman, Ash W, Inside Chaos, Eldritchia, The Stray Dog, Allura, and Greg Noble for their support, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.